Hi, my name is Dustin Brown. I'm the writer-director of the film Food for Thought. And can you tell us a bit about what that is and what the inspiration behind it was? Sure. Yeah, Food for Thought is a, it's a film that takes a twisted look at the line we draw between our pets and our food. How we designate some as companions and some as um, those that we eat. And it takes a, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a dark comedy and it takes a, um, an interesting perspective on it. Um, where, where did you come up with the inspiration for this film? Good question. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it's, I've always thought about the arbitrary lines that we create, you know, having pets my whole life and, you know, having, growing up with dogs and, and if you, anybody that's had a, had a, had a dog or cat or whatever animal it is, you realize that they're their own people and they're their own personalities and they have their own inner life. And it's the same with any other animal, you know, whether it's a pig or a cow, it, it, it's just, they're, they're people, you know, in their own, um, in their own way. And so I just thought, well, what, 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 what would it be like if, um, you know, you went to the shop and you saw, um, you know, cat meat or, or parrot meat or, you know, hamster meat or something like that. You know, people would think, oh, that's disgusting. You know, I can't touch that. Um, but it's really not, no different than a cow or a chicken or a pig. So just kind of playing with that. But instead of taking a morbid approach, kind of taking a, a, um, a twisted look, kind of a dark comedic look just to... Uh, get people to, to think about those those lines that we draw. I have always found that comedy is a really effective way of getting people to think deeply about something. Is that something you've played with before? Or what's your relationship to using comedy in this context? Yeah, well, I think in this specifically, you know, trying to get a, you know, trying to get a message across in 90 seconds and trying to say something specific. Um, I've just found that when it comes to, you know, animal suffering, people get turned off almost instantly when they see cruelty, when they see any type of violence or anything graphic and it's, and it's hard to watch. And so I thought it'd be interesting to try a different approach and to, and to get someone to think and just a question, just to raise a question and let them, you know, answer that for themselves however they want. And, and, and they'll, they'll take away and maybe they'll, they'll think on it, maybe, maybe they won't, but um, to just leave something in their mind instead of just turning them off immediately with something extremely, extremely graphic. Um, how did you get the grocery store to allow you to film the scene with the labeled meat? That's a very specific, <laughs> research, well-researched um, <laughs> question. Um, so, yeah, the the grocery store location. I mean, I think we we went, uh, you know, the 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 regular ways, um, location scouting. Actually, that was the it was it's a family-run grocery store in Los Angeles that we used, and um, that was actually the first place I looked at. Um, and the funny story, you know, I was like, I hope that they allow filming here. And, and when I drove up to look at it, there was a, another production, I think it was Warner Brothers, was like rapping. They had just shot there and they were like taking equipment out. I'm like, okay, I guess they're, you know, I guess they're friendly and, you know, talk to the owner and, and, and they, were, they were fine with it. We had to do it overnight when they were closed, but um, we had a, a great uh, graphic designer on, on this uh, and production designer named Jintar Bandenskate and, and she designed all the, the labels on all the meats and the signs and everything and we just kind of took their meat department and they, they allowed us to um, take all their products and turn it into dog meat products and put signs up everywhere and they were very generous with us so we had a, we had a fun time um, you know creating, creating that world. What has the reaction been um, to this film from meat eaters specifically? For meat eaters, it's a good question. It depends, you know. I think um, it's varied, you know, from one extreme to the other. It's, it's, um, you know, some reactions have been this is crazy. There's no connection with dogs and you know farm animals. It's not the same thing. 
some people are like, oh, that is you know interesting to think about, um, you know, and everything in between. I think, um, you know, any time that there's any type of pushback or controversy or people having some type of strong emotional response, good or bad, I think that then it's done its job. It's got people talking about it or, or arguing over it. So um, it's definitely been one of extremes. People love it or they're like, that's, that's crazy. You know, that's not, it's not, a, it's not an equal comparison. Um, so all different ranges of, of reactions. Um, have you made a 90 second film before and how did you find the process? Was it difficult or easier than other films? That's another good question. Um, I had not made a, a 90 second film before. This is my first time making a 90 second film and it was a really in interesting process. Most of the work that I've done has been longer form um, narrative work, um, not a lot of documentary work, but um, a lot of fiction films and um, so this was this was great to be able to just um, I th honestly I think the hardest thing to do is to tell a simple story you know just something that's simplistic and 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 you're forced to do that and I think with limitations with having that time limit as a limitation it forces you to get creative and and, and it starts with the script of just you know having it on the page and having it short enough and having it succinct enough and 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 then knowing how to execute it and we worked very closely with the DP to you know timing of it if it's like you know we only have five seconds for this shot of you know tracking somebody through the, the store well we're not going to shoot 30 seconds of that because it's it's not going to work or it's going to end up on the cutting room floor so just you know being very aware of the timing of of things in a way that is not as, as I wouldn't have been as much um, in a longer form film, so just a lot of preparation and just knowing. I mean, it's it's great to know what your limit is. Then you know, oh, it can only be this long, so I'm just going to design everything to make it fit in that context. Do you have any upcoming projects that we should know about? Or keep our eyes out for. I do. I have two um, films. One in particular, I think. Um, is very relevant to this. I'm in development on a feature documentary film and it has to do with the animal rights movement, mm. the foundation of the animal rights movement and looking at the, the most, I can't say much about it, but I'll say that it's looking at the most radical activists in the movement from the inside and exposing things that have never been exposed before. So uh, it will definitely take you on a journey on um, the the inside look at the life of an activist so that should be coming out we're, we're about to start into pre-production uh, in the next few weeks actually so um looking for a release next year on that well we look forward to your 